7 a.m. marks the beginning of the school day. And these students, aged from two to eight years old, are anxious to get to class. The teachers often wear masks to avoid passing on human germs to their students. Three-year-old Madara is in a hurry this morning, closely followed by Mumut and Lala. Valentino is gate monitor. Meryl starts the day with a tummy slide. And Kajura won't leave without her comfort sack. These kids in elementary groups one and two sometimes form a conga line to get to class. Five-year-olds, Chinta, and Jumbo are first out from the older gang. They all know the drill and tumble out in a furry orange avalanche. Morning assembly is a chance to catch up with their buddies, as these orphans have very deep bonds with each other. Three-year-olds, Eutrus and Madara, were both rescued as orphans at just a few months old. If their mums had survived, they both would have been suckled and carried for the first years of their lives and stayed with their mothers until they were around eight. Because there is so much to learn. Orangutan infants have a long dependency on their mothers, like humans do. These youngsters should all still be living with their mothers. But as forests in Borneo are decimated, and adult orangutans killed by plantation owners and poachers. This species is on the brink of extinction. But these are the lucky ones, who have a chance for a future in the wild. The Nyaro Menteng Orangutan Jungle School began in 1999 with just a handful of orphans. Currently, there are 68 in class, divided into five groups according to their age and skills. And they follow a well-honed curriculum. Groups one and two take class close together. Group three is on its own, and groups four and five head deep into the jungle. Three-year-olds, Valentino and Eutris, know which teacher to follow and head off with their mates to group one. Everyone pairs up with their buddy for the walk to class. But in their neediest moments, Hand-holding with their specially trained babysitter is very popular. It's just a short walk from the elementary dorms to the group one and two classrooms. First lesson of the day is Bwaya, or fruit time. Orangutans naturally spend up to six hours a day foraging for food. So breakfast doubles as a perfect learning opportunity. This morning's lesson is in coconut cracking. Orangutans learn from example, 
so their caregiver shows them how it's done. Moomut, a little male, catches on immediately, while Valentino has a more interpretive approach. With his distinctive pale belly stripe, Valentino is the class clown of Forest School Group 1. What he lacks in technique, he makes up for in exuberance. But when the puzzle proves too hard to crack, Valentino does exactly what he would do if he was in the wild. Asks mum for help. Valentino was found alone in a forest as a baby after his mum was killed. Babysitter Letta is currently his foster mother and she knows Valentino must learn to do this on his own if he's to ever graduate from jungle school. Nearby, the students of Forest Group 2 are incrementally more skillful. It's not so much age that divides Groups 1 and 2, but ability. Little Merrill has learned how to husk her coconut so she can enjoy the sweet milk. But not for long. Opportunistic Valentino moves in to share. He may not be the best at coconut cracking, but learning how to reap the rewards of others' hard work could be an excellent survival skill. Three-year-old Benny has a more laid-back approach. He's exercising his jaws as his powerful teeth scrape the coconut shell. But there's not a lot of other energy being exerted. He doesn't even flinch as Meryl helps herself to his leftovers. Little does Benny know that his expanding girth hasn't gone unnoticed. And he's about to be put on a diet. <laughs> 